Hey guys and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids, a series dedicated to various artworks and small creations created by the community based on animal hybrid prompts. Now this is part two of the Orcuel Komodo Dragon prompt. If you haven't seen part one, please definitely go check that one out as well. There's just as many amazing artists and artwork you will not be disappointed. We've also had a couple of last minute submissions, so I can also guarantee that from start to end, we're gonna have even more amazing artworks in this one too. So as always everyone, thank you all so much for participating. I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. And on that note, let's dig in. For our first submission of part two, we have this piece by Guggenheim. And I really love just the way they've done the white markings. We've got the trademark Orkwell markings we've seen before, but this one's like with a much more Komodo kind of reptilian texture to it, all little spotty mottled parts, which really adds a lot to it and gives it that like Komodo texture. Next up is a fearsome looking one by Empiric. Actually, I say fearsome, looking at the eyes, it almost looks curious in a way. It really gives me like a bit of a toothless night fury vibe. I really like the shading on this one, the lighting, especially the little specks of light around the arms. And the overall stance and the way it's looking towards the viewer is epic, I really like that. And of course from Empiric we've got a little bonus sketch here of their piece. <laughs> Just looking, I can't tell if it's like smirking or adorable, it's got like a little bit of an angry eye there. <laughs> but it's a really sweet piece. Next up we have Alice Bill with a both a serious and, of course, rather jokey one. Now this is quite interesting. I think this might actually be the first, um, I wouldn't call it humanoid, but it does give like a bit of a humanoid kind of vibe to me, which is probably very much the first one. That being said, again, I really love the lighting on this one. And of course, I really love the top hat monocle and T1 on the right. It's kind of amazing, really, how it's made like a rather cool and cute looking creature. Still will look rather cool, even with the city outfit on. It's actually really impressive. Next up, we have Glass Yaptal, aka Shatter Glass, with another really cool looking just starts overall. I love the posture in that one. Now, seeing that it's underwater, I'm kind of imagining that it may have just been like in the pro in the process of doing like a bit of a dive and kind of shooting back upwards. So a bit of a combat manoeuvre. That's just what I get from looking at it, but I just love like all the definition of the musculature, the way it's breaking to the sand. Also close up there, the inside of the mouth is really well done. It's subtle, but a lot of detail down there. Again, it just looks awesome. And also all the very subtle bits of bubbles as well, like around the tail and the mouth. That is really cool. Next up, we have Sagasol. This one's adorable. <laughs> I really, really like this one. The face, it just looks so gentle. Like, it's probably meant to be a fully grown one, but after seeing like all the other ones, this one kind of makes me feel like it's a juvenile. And it just looks really adorable, I love it. I also really like the overall shape of the snout with the open mouth one like that. It's just, in terms of proportions, very well done. Next up is Luna Eclipse with another dossier looking one. And I really like the texture that she's got going on with the body there. Also the coloration is again, very different, although that could actually be because it's a dossier. But regardless, it looks really cool. I also love the little description there. I named one princess and this is now my best friend. <laughs> I can imagine it being a pretty cool tame to have. In fact, imagine having this in Ark. That'd be awesome. Next up is Polar Mo with another really cool texturized one. In fact, the overall texturing on this one kind of reminds me of a seal or a walrus. Those jaws, though, the jaws and the slobber. I know Kavana Dragons can be very slobbery anyway, but that, like that actually is kind of intimidating. You would not want to go anywhere near that mouth. Imagine a sheer bite if it's slobbering that much. I do really like this art. I like the overall style. And again, the texturing and patterning in particular. Next up we have Arcane with a rather nice and simple one. Now I must say it was a really good choice adding in the scales there because even on like a fairly more simplistic style, adding the scales is such a good job of just adding like a bit of variety to the image, a bit of detail, a bit of texturing. And I really like the way it transitions from like a scaly body into a very smooth tail. You can really see where the Komodo ends and the orca starts. I also like the patterning on the tail fins as well. Next up we have a Spore Creation by Cat. I must say I'm kind of glad to see I wasn't the only one who imagined having some kind of like webbing or winged kind of thing going between the arm and the body. I also like the long serpentine tail curved upwards, kind of gives like a bit of strength and a bit of flexibility. Next up we have Frozen with a far more humanoid interpretation here, which is really quite interesting. I really like the overall proportions. I think it's done a fantastic job in terms of defining the musculature around the chest, the torso and the arms. I tend to find that defining muscles on humanoid pieces can be like very hit or miss. It can easily look very uncanny. But I feel like Frozen here like has struck a really good balance and it actually does look really good. Next up we have Draculady with one hell of an epic looking scene. Now it's really eye catching, it's all the bubbles around the mouth and the nose. It really highlights an action happening, but also the eye. The eye is just beautifully shaded, very, very piercing, just looks fantastic. I also really like all the stripes going on the body and the face. They're very subtle, but you can really see them. 
this is just such a really cool one overall. Like, I love the fact that there's actually motion occurring. That's something very hard to pull off, but mate, Drakis has done such a fantastic job here. My goodness, I the eye. I could just stare at the eye forever. Next up, we have Super Chicken with what I think might actually be a painting. I'm not actually sure what medium they used, but whatever material it was, it's got like a really lovely kind of variation of colors, especially around the lighter areas, like the back of the neck, the tail, the shoulders. I think it looks lovely and it really adds like a lot of depth to it. I also like how they've gone with a very, almost a dolphin-like tail. Dolphin tails tend to be very chubby and like just completely full of muscle and blubber up until you reach the tip where it very abruptly cuts off into the paddle itself. So that's a very interesting variation to see. I also like the claws. I would not want to go anywhere near those at all. Next up, we have Hazilla with another really epic looking action-y kind of pose going on here. So this one again is very obviously, you know, more kaiju, which is absolutely fine. Haz does kaiju very well. And you know what, mate? Keep going, just keep going at it. This is such a cool, like really monstrous interpretation. I just love the way the face looks, like the face or the spikes and osteoderms. The tail as well just looks nuts. I gotta admit, I'd love to see a lot more of this particular design here. I'd be very curious to see like what more Haz would have in mind for this. Next up is Silent Gamer, with their Komodo Orca sitting atop a pile of rocks, looking very regal I have to say. Really looks like it's in charge. I also like how they change the direction of the way that the hybrid is pointing, it gives it a bit more dynamic and more to look at. Next up is a Spore Creation by Frost Dragon 365 and I would not want to go anywhere near that mouth, just imagine those teeth coming at you. I also really like all the different markings and the tail being high up in the air, almost feels like it's in an intimidating pose. Yeah, I would not want to go anywhere near that mouth. Imagine that coming at you. Next up is Coco Cat 123 in a really cool looking dark and gloomy environment. I think the environment looks very, very beautiful. I also like the perspective lighting on the Orca Komodo itself. It's a very subtle detail, but one that a lot of people tend to miss is it's having the light shining through from above and the lower part of the creature being darker. It just gives it a lot of depth and I think they've done a very good job of that. Also the face as well. I really like all the markings and scales defined all around the face. Also the perspective and the way it's turning towards the viewer. Really eerie, really nice. Next up we have Gyro. And I just love, I love the colors, I love the flippers, and I love the mouth on this. I love how well-defined these features are. The mouth in particular is almost adorable in a really horrible way. Now I'll say that because I personally tend to find, you know, the inside of creature mouths to be just a little bit creepy. But the fact that they've managed to, you know, instill that sensation in me goes to show just how well of a good job they have done at illustrating the inside of a creature's mouth. I think it's very, very well done. Also very neat, they've added teeth on the bottom jaw, not the upper. I also really like the overall positioning of the claws and digits, just how they're kind of spread apart. And the colour scheme as well, the colour scheme's really nice, very warm colours. This is lovely, I really like this one. Coming up next is the Chronicles Witch. I must say, the texturing and shading along the body of this creature is beautiful. There's a lot of crosshatch shading, intertwining with various lighting and different colours, and I just think it just looks very, very well done. It gives the body a very rough and somewhat armoured texture. I also like the different angles and views here. It really gives a good look of the variety of, you know, patterns on the back, on the stomach. They've put a lot of detail into this, and I think it looks fantastic. The glowing as well is also like a really nice, subtle touch. Following Chronicle is Discovery 17 with what I think may be our first 3D model. I love the overall texture and bump mapping going on the body. The patterning as well is a lot more complex and looks really quite interesting. I also like all the different dorsal fins. It's interesting to see four of them up there instead of usually just the one. Also the piercing black eyes. This looks really cool. Up next is our second submission for the Zeppelin King. Now this one seems to be more of a hunting scene, hunting slash parenting. You can see the hatching there in the bottom left hand corner and a bunch of eggs hatching up there as well. Some food provided that looks really, really adorable. I can't help but wonder what that creature is that they've hunted. Like perhaps it's another hybrid or something else. The scene also has me wondering, like actually seeing these creatures on land hunting, would they run like crocodiles? Would they be stealth hunters or ambushers? This was quite thought provoking. And I also just want to point out just how well done the hands are. Coming up next is Toxic Vomit with this crazy looking Leviathan piece. Now, I say Leviathan, it reminds me a lot of the Emperor Leviathan, I believe. No, the Dragon Leviathan from Subnautica. But they also mentioned they got some inspiration from a Hypo Giga from the Idol. Overall, it just looks really badass. This is a creature I would love to see, like, realized in 3D, like a Subnautica Leviathan. I'd love to see this in a game. I really like the mottled color scheme, the different shades of blue, green, and brown. Also, that the standard Orcaware markings are all brown as opposed to white in this one. This is really fantastic. It's a color scheme that really sells it for me. I think this is really, really well done and very well imagined. Also, the tongue, I just noticed. Oh, God, that tongue is horrible. It's fantastic. 
Next up we have Dread Drago. Oh my goodness, just look at the face. The face is so well done. I love the overall shape of it, like in terms of proportions, I think the sizing is fantastic. The coloration is so rich, the eye is beautiful. And the overall body kind of reminds me of a plesiosaur, like a much more bulkier, kind of well-built one. Just due to the way that the arms and legs are positioned, so this is beautiful, I really, really like this. This is again another creature I would love to see realised in a game. In fact, this is one I'd love to see in Ark, that way I can actually play with it and ride it as well. Next up is this really awesome looking spore creation by Filey. So this one you can tell is designed to actually animate in the water to look like it's really swimming and flapping around. I really like the long big tail. Also the design of the dorsal fin on the top there. So like a bit of a sharp edge to it, which is quite cool. The mouth as well, I believe is from the new Dancer Heads mod, which is a really nice touch. It looks very polished. Also the hands as well. The hands look terrifying, but in a really cool way. And overall, I really like the long sleek design. I can imagine it being like a very fast swimmer, very streamlined. Next up is the Varanus Orca by Jacob Zola. And I really would recommend pausing and just looking at the little bits of information there. It's really cool, like really explains a lot about their design, such as the dorsal fin being shrunk and the tail fin being smaller due to the fusion of the hybrids. So this is quite interesting, whereas a lot of us have thought about the whole process of, you know, how would it look like with the most features, Jack up here has taken a much more kind of almost realistic approach and imagined how such a fusion would actually look with the creatures merging. So it's actually quite cool to see all the features kind of toned down as opposed to increased. It's a very different take on the whole hybrid idea and I really like it. Like, I, I love the thought that's gone into this one. Next up is Jenna Pothia. And I love the overall patterning going on with the Orca Whale segments. There's some really cool, almost giraffe-like patterning or spots, which is a very interesting, unique idea there. I also love the way the patterns kind of integrate on the tail, which really highlights the tips and ends, really cool. The teeth look terrifying. <laughs> you can definitely see the Komodo in that. And I love the big scary claws coming out the fins. Coming up next is one by Rabina Dragon. The shading on this one's beautiful. I really, really like the shading. This also seems to be another transient one when it comes to claws and flippers. I really like the kind of in-between style there. The face is gorgeously done, as well as the lighting around the neck folds and baggy skin, which is always like a nice little subtle touch. Also the tongue being a different color, it's quite an interesting touch there. The subtle, but it really adds a lot to it. But again, I love the shading. I thought the shading and the colors on this one are absolutely stunning. Really well done. The following Rabina is Maver with two spore submissions. So the first one here is a far more arctic kind of build there and you can really tell by the blubber and just how thick it is. This one really gives me some like polar bear slash seal vibes. I can really imagine it being like a very sturdy, strong predator. It's also interesting to see that on this one, the tail has actually gone a bit smaller. I think probably all of us so far have done like very large aquatic suited tails, whereas maybe has gone the opposite approach and has actually made the tail fairly vestigial, which is a really interesting change. And for maybe the second submission is a baby version, which is by itself just adorable. And I have to say, you know, really credit to him. Doing baby creatures in sport, especially, you know, posed ones like this, this is maybe a speciality, is posed creations. And let me tell you, they are difficult. So mates, really well done. I really admire Maver's consistent ability to do pose creations and scenes like this one. Really fantastic, man. Next up we have Niku with this really cool, like, I think it's meant to be like a Leviathan. I'm not sure. This one's got like a much more kind of monstrous appearance to it. I love the way the stripes and markings are done. Like the stripes are like Orca, but you know, ranked up to 11. Also the fins as well, come to think of it, are very jagged and almost like a bit battle-worn, kind of spiky. And the way it's kind of pointing downwards looks really menacing. This is cool. This is definitely a far more monstrous one and I think it looks fantastic. I really like just the overall appearance of this one. Next up we have Shanky with an extraordinarily muscled and very powerful looking one here. Something about the overall stance and the long tail actually makes it feel like this is a very powerful sprinter of all things. And then while I imagine it's sprinting at you, the absolute size of the mouth, if that was to like get a hold of you, you'd be done. This one to me just really screams power. It looks very, very strong, very well defined. I think in terms of lighting, she's done an absolutely fantastic job and texturing too. And it's also interesting seeing the back legs there, like they're kind of fins, but kind of legs at the same time. It's a really cool kind of style to that. Another really fantastic piece. Next up we have the Higiri with a beautiful, almost mosaic kind of appearance here. The Orca Komodo itself like has a very mosaic -y kind of look. I mean, it's of course scales, but the overall style that's gone into this is really beautiful. In fact, not just the creature itself, but you compare that to the contrast of the fire and the water, there's a lot of different themes and styles here and it overall just looks very artistic and very, very pretty. I also love the lighting as well, the warm glow on the Komodo Orca. Oh, when it comes to colours and shading, this one is just stunning. Coming up next is Triop 5 with another spore creation. 
this one I think is actually completely not modded, which I have to say is very impressive with how streamlined and smooth this creature is. I say from experience, making smooth things in Spore without mods is quite challenging, but in particular around the face, I think it's very, very well sculpted, very clean, overall beautiful execution. I also love the adorable little back feet. Up next is Waffle Nums with this adorable one called Mr. Chunk. I love the little happy one in the bottom right hand corner there, and the little doodles are cute. But I do love those big scare flippers, it sets here more well than Kimono, which is completely and utterly fine. After all, this is all just for the fun of it. Although I definitely can see some Komodo vibes, especially with the arms and legs, the big old teeth, and a much longer, more serpentine body. I think this is a good one, and I really do like the whole cute vibe to it. And coming up last, but absolutely not least, is Zedenzel, with this crazy kaiju looking one. This looks like something you'd see from either Pacific Rim or Monster Hunter. I love the flippers in particular, all the scars, all the defined line art there. It's also cool seeing a preview of it being both out and underwater, and seeing the way it breathes with the air bubbles coming out. This is absolutely fantastic. This is a really stunning illustration. God, and the scars give it, like, I'm really not one who's like a big fan of scars. I've kind of grown out of that. But I feel like the scars on this one just really make it. They're not too overpowering, but it really shows, you know, a battle-hardened creature. It's something that's been in a couple of fights and come out unscathed. It looks fantastic. Oh, one more, a very, very close last minute submission by Zumpo123. I really like the style of the face and the fins on this one. The face has got like a very soft, like you can definitely tell it's Komodo, but it almost looks mammalian, which is fitting considering, you know, part orca whale here. And the fins as well just have like a very armored, kind of intimidating appearance. I also love the markings. I love the definition of all the scales and spots and the stripes themselves look very cool as well. This is awesome, man. And I also like the additional blue coloring. Makes for an interesting change. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, that is all of them. What an incredible collection of submissions, both part one and part two. Every single one of you, honestly, absolutely well done. And I really am so glad that you're all enjoying us. Thank you all so, so much. And of course, for the long coveted and much, much requested fourth prompt to be revealed at long last, as many of you have been requesting it. I've been a little bit torn. I've had two different ideas, but not really sure which one to choose even as I say this, but I'm thinking for at long last, the next prompt shall be a cobra and a lionfish. This has got a lot of potential. Is it going to be a land creature? Is it going to be an ocean creature? Maybe even a Quetzalcoatl? Is it going to have a hood? Is it going to have frills and quills? I'm really interested in seeing how people deal with this one. And credit goes to those of you in Discord who are all having a chat about it, throwing ideas back and forth and creating this combination here. So for those of you who are wanting to join in, the easiest way to join in is via Discord. Invite us in the description. Otherwise, here's my email as well, that way you can safely assure it's been sent to me. But generally, anywhere that you can reach me, comment section, Twitter, DeviantArt, so on, as long as you can reach me, I should be able to see it. But like I said, Discord is by far the easiest one. I'm really excited to see what you'll come up with. As always, thank you all so much for watching, thank you for listening, thank you for taking part, and I am very excited to see you all next time. Take care, have a wonderful day.